What happens when DNA evidence becomes the key to a death row conviction? It was December 1996 when tragedy struck. A promising 21-year-old dance student, Julie Buskin, was abducted from her apartment's car park. The brutal crime left her bound and shot in the head, her lifeless body discarded near a lake on the outskirts of Oklahoma City. Despite the clear evidence of a violent crime, the mystery surrounding her case remained unresolved. The question of who committed this heinous act hung in the air, haunting the minds of investigators and the public alike. But the case remained unsolved until years later, a surprising breakthrough occurred. A crime once shrouded in mystery was unraveled thanks to the advances in forensic science. As the unsolved case of Julie Buskin's murder lay dormant, a seemingly unrelated event led to a breakthrough. Anthony Sanchez, already serving time for burglary, was unexpectedly linked to the crime scene. It all came down to the DNA. Years after Buskin's tragic demise, a match was made. DNA from the victim's clothing was compared to a database of convicted felons, and lo and behold, it matched Sanchez. This breakthrough was a double-edged sword. On one side, a glimmer of hope for justice. On the other, a potential death sentence for Sanchez. The trial that followed was no less than a roller coaster ride. With the DNA evidence as the linchpin, the prosecution built a strong case against Sanchez. Despite this, Anthony Sanchez, the man now called a brutal killer, maintained his innocence. He claimed the DNA was fabricated, false, not his. He argued his case with fervor, but the jury wasn't convinced. Sanchez was sentenced to death in 2006, but the controversy surrounding his conviction was far from over. Years later, the echoes of this case still reverberate, even after the final act of justice. Anthony Sanchez, at the age of 44, found himself strapped down in the death chamber at the Oklahoma State Penitentiary. As the lethal drugs coursed through his veins, he protested his innocence with his final breaths. An unusual twist in his narrative was his decision to forego a clemency application. Many viewed this as a last-ditch effort to spare his life, but Sanchez chose a different path. His final moments were marked with expressions of gratitude towards his supporters and criticisms of his former lawyers. His spiritual advisor, who was present in the chamber, was among the last people he thanked. But the narrative that stuck was his insistence on his innocence. I'm innocent, I didn't kill nobody, he stated, his voice echoing through the death chamber. As the curtain fell on this chapter, the aftermath stirred a flurry of emotions. Yuli Buskin's family, after 26 years, nine months, and one day, found closure and peace. Yet the echoes of Sanchez's claims of innocence, his criticism of the fabricated DNA evidence, and his decision to bypass clemency, added more fuel to the ongoing debate on the reliability of DNA evidence in capital punishment cases. The state attorney general maintained that the DNA evidence linking Sanchez to the crime was unequivocal, with the odds of a random match being one in 94 trillion. Despite this, Sanchez's unwavering claim of innocence continues to challenge the narrative, raising questions and stirring debates. As the debate rages on, one thing remains certain, the tragic loss of a young life and the relentless pursuit of justice, however contentious it may be.